And we are back at CSM 2018, where there are more than 17,000 people here. And the man to my left is Chuck Hazel, and we're going to talk about incredible progress that came out of the special interest group on imaging uh, for the orthopedic section. Before we talk about that, though, I want to, for anybody that's watching in the physical therapy space, they're an APTA member, they're not, and they, they, they probably know that there are specialty sections, like the orthopedic section. They may not understand that they're special interest groups. So just at a basic level, when somebody joins a special interest group, kind of what are they getting into? What does the imaging SIG kind of do uh, together? Right. Within the orthopedic section, there are actually seven special interest groups. And the one with which I am most associated is the imaging special interest group. So this is really comprised of physical therapists who not only share a common interest in imaging, but we see a vision of practice that includes imaging among our referral privileges. And so this is a model of practice that exists very successfully in other parts of the world. And so we are advocating that this is part of civilian practice in the US as well. And so that's really, to me, I mean, this is a value of APTA story. So a lot of people, we often talk about the association is the membership. So it's people like you, it's people within the SIG who are actively engaged and looking out for the better of the profession. And that's kind of the story we're going to tell today. So the story starts, I'll start it for you and you finish it. Um, we have a situation where a physical therapist notices that in the Northeast, certain payers are starting to require a certain certification uh, or accreditation for, uh, to provide imaging services if, if they're going to get paid. Uh, and where does the story go from there? Right, so the issue was, is always going to go back to reimbursement at some level. So what we recognized is that if we're going to tackle this successfully, we have to prove that in fact, physical therapists can be content experts on this, that we can competently uh, deliver ultrasound imaging and take that information and use it in a great way clinically. So what happened is then we started the conversation with the American Institute for Ultrasound in Medicine, which previously did not actually recognize physical therapists in any of its official documents. And so we started a conversation with them and they realized that in fact we had many of the same interests that they did. And so that led to them actually changing their training guidelines to be inclusive of physical therapists and the relationship has grown since then. And that's so cool, I mean, it starts with noticing this problem, right, and in pretty short order, you go from them really having a very welcoming, I mean, it starts with a conversation, right? Right. Uh, but how rapid was the change and kind of where do things stand now? It, it was really pretty amazing how rapidly all of this turned around. We started the conversation about 15 or 16 months ago. Um, with an organization like that, there are obviously multiple levels, multiple barriers that you have to tackle to bring about that kind of change. And so we started the conversation, things went along, and they soon began asking us for our input. So last year, we actually held two webinars, two webinars that were done by physical therapists, for physical therapists, but also for physicians and other medical providers. Those were so well received that we actually have four in 2018 scheduled to be presented by physical therapists for, for the membership of the American Institute in Ultrasound and Medicine. So AIUM does credentialing for practices. So that pertains more to your procedures, your equipment, your record keeping, that type of thing. And individual therapists can also pursue credentials uh, such as the RMSK, Registered in Musculoskeletal Sonography. That is an individual credential. So that is another form of external validation that physical therapists are indeed content experts in this area. And so how long does it take to go through this process for either of those credentials, you know, really? Um, well, there's a testing process, and, and in some cases the, for the AIUM, uh, I think they actually have uh, site visits. So it, it can be a process because you have to get a certain number of, uh, of examinations, practice examinations, so these are not easy credentials to get. They, they stand the test in terms of really validating expertise. So this is a great story of APTA members, again, standing up, uh, getting good change made. Um, whether it's related specifically to this, 
um, or the development of webinars from a from an imaging SIG perspective, what's next? I mean, is, is there something next on the, on the horizon in terms of this evolution? Well, with the imaging SIG, in fact, that's what our session was on this morning. Our session, our educational session from 8 to 10 a.m. was all about helping states prepare for future practice that is inclusive of imaging. So this is a model that has existed for 40 plus years in the military. It exists in other countries throughout the world. And every time it's been studied, every time, not most of the time, but every time it's been studied, this has led to better patient outcomes, better patient satisfaction, and surprisingly lower costs. So very cool. This is the kind of stuff we're talking about at CSM. This is the kind of progress that can happen through engagement through your association. For Chuck Hazel, I'm Jason Bellamy, and I'll catch you later.